Hi, everyone. Welcome to this advanced English lesson. I'm joined today by Greg. We're really excited to be doing this format today because it's going to be a real English conversation and we're going to have the two of us. Nothing is planned. Nothing has been rehearsed. It's just natural flow of conversation. And we're doing this because we want to say a big thank you to our 1,000 subscribers here on YouTube. So we're super stoked about that. And for all of you who've been joining us through our podcast, thank you so much. So without further ado, let's jump right into this real English conversation. All right, here we go. Today in this real English conversation, we're going to talk about one of our favorite topics, Thanksgiving, which is an American holiday that we celebrate in the U.S. All right, so Greg, what are you looking forward to with Thanksgiving just around the corner? Yeah, I, for me, what I most look forward to with Thanksgiving is the food. No, I'm joking. It's family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting to see family. I, you know, we travel a lot and all of us are busy. And so it's hard for the family to get together. And Thanksgiving, sometimes even more so than other holidays, yeah. provides a really strong impetus to gather, right? A really strong drive to gather for everyone, um, to come together yeah. um, and to celebrate, you know, being a family and being together. It's And, and the food is part of that too. Definitely. Right? It's because, a huge part of it. Yeah. Because yeah. the food mm -hmm. serves as this kind of magnet that yeah. draws everyone, even though they're coming for the company. The food gives an excuse and a nice um, sort of format, a nice canvas to have a family gathering. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It's, a, it's an excuse to have a wonderful meal and to really ultimately get together with family and people that you might not see throughout the year because, like you said, everyone's busy. And in terms of just like the dishes, I think... You know, there are some of my favorites, but I want to first hear from what your favorites are. Like, what are some of the favorite Thanksgiving dishes that you look forward to eating? Oof. Gosh, there's so many. I think, well, there's a main course dish that I really like. Uh, there's a dessert I really like. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a pre-Thanksgiving uh, meal that I also really like. Okay. So you want to start with the pre-Thanksgiving meal? Yeah, so yeah. this isn't technically on Thanksgiving, but yeah. the day before. Well, it's a family tradition. Yes. Yeah. The day before, my family has a tradition of uh, pea soup, a very simple meal. It's just pea soup, bread, yeah. and cheese. And there's like some sausage in there. And the pea soup has sausage. Um, and again, it's very simple. It's designed to um, give the chefs a bit of a break before the big day. Yeah. Um, but also just to, you know, before you have a big feast, it's nice to do um, something simple. Uh, so so that, you're hungry enough for the so, big yeah. meal that awaits. Exactly. It gives the next day more meaning. Uh, and I happen to love pea soup. So that's, that's uh, my first thing that I love. Yeah. Um, on the day of, uh, it's a close call between my mom makes um, really good fresh rolls. So she needs the dough. Um, and everything. Let them rise. Let's let them rise. Them yeah, rise. it's a multi-day affair. Yeah. And so those are fresh rolls. They're almost like a brioche. They're really nice. Yeah. Um, I also love squash, butternut squash. I'm a big fan now too. I wasn't like that into it for a long time, but recently, I think in the last few years, I've started really liking it. And I remember last Thanksgiving, it was a much smaller, smaller gathering because of everything going on with the pandemic. But we had the butternut squash with the mushrooms that she puts on there, and it was spicy. Yeah. And I, I think I had second helpings of that because it was so, so good. It's very rich. It can be. Um, yeah. The way we make it yeah. is. Um, so for those who don't know, butternut squash is, looks a bit like a pumpkin. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's, it's nice and orange, and it has the same texture as pumpkin. Um, really good. But it's just a little uh, more narrow and ovular if you actually see the... Um, the, the fruit, I guess, itself, the vegetable. Yeah, vegetable. I'm not sure what you would technically call it. Starchy vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> but it is delicious. It is really good. Um, and my family makes it with cream. So you basically, yeah. I've made this before. You, you cut it into cubes 
You roast it. You take it? the squash, you peel it. Yeah. You cut it in cubes. You don't roast it. Oh. You put the raw cubes in a pot with cream. Oh my gosh. Heavy cream. A heavy whipping cream. Heavy whipping cream. And you just stir and stir and stir for, you know, it, it has to be at least an hour. Yeah. And slowly the squash breaks down and turns into almost like a, um, a, a soup. Yeah. It's like, like a, a puree. puree. Yeah. Yeah. It's really <laughs> nice. Um, and then you add the spicy peppers. And you put some hot, hot, hot pepper. Chili pepper yeah, in there. Yeah, it's very good with the pepper. And then, yeah, my mom likes to cut some portobellos, yeah. cubed portobellos, and you sprinkle those on top. Yeah, I really like cranberry sauce. Mm -hmm. I love it with very, like, very low sugar. Or I try to every year convince people not to put sugar in it. So if it's your mom or if it's my mom making it, I'd be like, no sugar, please. <laughs> but then it's a little bit too acidic. So I think you still need a little bit. But we sometimes use allulose, which is a great uh, substitute. Anyway, we can do more on that in another video. But the idea is that I definitely love the cranberry sauce and that I really like the orange um, zest that they <laughs> sort of like add to it. That flavor is so good. Yeah. There's something about it. And there's like the sour taste, the flavor. And it goes really well with the turkey. It does. Right? Yeah. Cranberry is this funny thing. I, I haven't really seen it outside of the u.s much yeah it's um hard to come by but they're these little tart berries red round tart berries smooth yeah. um and you can get cranberry juice which they often load with sugar yep but it is yummy <laughs> um if you especially if you can find the low sugar variety yeah um and then you have cranberry sauce and typically people like to have it with their turkey um yeah and it's yeah it's it's a great addition it's really good and of course there's the turkey um, I love the turkey. Yes, meat. every Thanksgiving has every Thanksgiving. a big roasted turkey. Some people deep fry their turkey. Oh my gosh. I don't, um, I've there never are many had, different ways. I've never had a deep a turkey. fried turkey. Yeah. I've never had. We typically just do it roasted. Yeah. Yeah. Turkeys, um, they come also in all different sizes. That's right. True. So you can get little turkeys if it's just a couple of people. You can get massive, massive turkeys. turkeys. Of course, you need a huge oven. And to cook that would take hours. Right, literally oh, yeah. hours. It can, it can, and uh, I mean, it depends how you cook it. There's many different cooking styles. So you oh. can quick cook it or slow cook it. Right. You can also spatchcock it, which means you open up the turkey. Yes, you lay pieces. it kind of like flat. Yeah, and that really reduces the cooking time. Yeah. Um, but I have a funny story, which is when I used to live in Beijing, China. Mm -hmm. Um, I uh, also wanted to celebrate Thanksgiving there with my friends. Right. Uh, but of course, you can't get fresh turkey there because no one really eats turkey. It's yeah. hard to get. Yeah. Uh, and so you would have to order one of these frozen turkeys from a uh, food import store. Okay. Do you know where it would come from? Like what country? Uh, from the U.S. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. They'd yeah. import it from the U.S. Yeah. Um, and the, uh, the the challenge was you had to get on a list, a waiting list, uh, because there were only so many they could import. And all the foreigners in Beijing would all converge on this store to try and yeah, get these and turkeys. Yeah, like, get me my Thanksgiving turkey. <laughs> but the other challenge with it is you now have a frozen turkey. Yeah. And typically, if you have a frozen piece of food, yeah. um, you stick it in the fridge for a day or two to defrost. And so if you want to be safe, you do two days yeah. um, and then you're ready to go. Well, what I've learned is that a frozen turkey takes a lot longer than just two days to defrost. So what are we talking, like a week? Like at least four days, oh I would say. Gosh. Wow, yeah. that's a better part of it. All I know is every time I've done this, I underestimate the amount of time it takes. So every time I've had to uh, cook with a turkey that's already, that's still partially frozen. Yeah. But it turns out it works out fine. Yeah. Uh, and so again, it it's, it's to evoke that, you know, that the feeling that we get on Thanksgiving. Yes. No matter it's, how the turkey turns out. It's not, I mean, it is about the food, but it's also not about the food. Totally. Um, like you can make it as much or as, you know, not about the food <laughs> as you want. Um, I think also that what's really great about Thanksgiving is that first of all, it's it's a holiday that is not tied to a religion or a, or a faith. And so you get, it's very inclusive in that like, everyone can celebrate it. If you're in the U.S. and you want to celebrate it, of course, you can, right? there. It's, it's a very like inclusive holiday, which I love. But it's also not tied around like a commercial uh, like exchange almost, right? It's not about presents. It's not about trying to buy somebody something or to exchange gifts it's really about the food and the time and the togetherness i think that's what's really yeah, nice about it that's a really good point um virtually every other holiday in the u.s has been totally commercialized yeah yeah right for sure christmas probably the most but you also have 
Valentine's Halloween, Day, Valentine's Day, Easter. Easter. There's yeah. every for every one of those holidays, the shops fill with um, all kinds of uh, uh, goods and services to, yeah. to um, sort of maximize the profits from these holidays. Right. Whereas you're right. I mean, Thanksgiving, it's it's more pure. Yeah, and, and it really is just about being thankful, being thankful yeah, for, for being sure. alive, being thankful for having people uh, who you love and love you all around. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, I would I would agree with that. I think it's the purest of the holidays we have. Yeah, and it's really cozy. So in my family, we would uh, go around the table and say what we're thankful for and what we're grateful for. And it's like a nice way to sort of connect with those feelings and to voice them and to be with the people that you love. And so it's a really like a warm and fuzzy <laughs> feeling that yeah. happens. Um, what about dessert? What's your favorite Thanksgiving dessert? I know. So is. yeah, the capstone <laughs> for me is always the pumpkin pie. Yeah. But the yeah. problem is, I'm the only one in my family. I started liking it too. Who likes pumpkin pie? I'm glad you joined the ranks. Yeah. And I didn't used to, but I started liking it good, a lot. Good. Yeah. So I have another. Uh, I have another um, teammate. Yeah. In terms of because I always have to try and convince everyone else to make a pumpkin pie. Because if you're the only one eating it, then you have this big pie. Yeah, and it goes to waste. And it'll go to waste. Yeah. I mean, you you will put it to good use. Um, and you can also and there's, like, freeze. It, yeah, yeah. But well, I don't know if you can freeze. Can you not? I I think it would. Oh. I, I've never tried to be a nice science I don't experiment. Know. I feel like <laughs> why not? Anyway, you could try it. The problem is pie dough. I think once you cook it, it's hard. Well, who knows? Who knows? Might I'm, be an experiment. I'm willing to try. Might be an experiment. Um, but it doesn't have to be a pie either, right? I just like the pumpkin stuffing. Well, and so last year you made the chiffon, the pumpkin chiffon. Yeah, which, which is, is basically like a mousse, a pumpkin mousse. That was excellent. And that's really good. That was good. really good. Yeah. But again, yeah. I happen to be the only one that seemed to really like it. I'm glad in you. And me too. So. Um, I like cheesecake. But that's not really like a Thanksgiving. That's not really Thanksgiving-y. You say that, but it turns out for this Thanksgiving, we're yeah. going to be making a pumpkin cheesecake. Yeah, well, I, so. I'm looking forward to that because one, I love cheesecake, and now I've started really liking pumpkin, so that should yeah. be amazing. Um, provided that it's not too sweet because we try to cut down the sugar. Yeah. But the other ones that I really like, and this is more traditional, the apple pie, obviously. And I guess pecan pie or pecan, however yeah, you want to say it. Yeah, pecan pie is really nice. Yeah. But again, I feel like with pecan, it's a little too sweet. because Always people very sweet. Just like go yeah. at it with the sugar. So that's the I'll other thing. I'll have like thing. this. I'll have like a tiny little bit. Yeah. yeah. I think for people who like want to participate in Thanksgiving, but maybe might have like dietary restrictions or allergies or things. Like, I think it's it's definitely not uncommon to bring a dish to the Thanksgiving. Let's say you're invited somewhere. Um, to the Thanksgiving Day uh, celebration or event, if you want to call it that, because that way you can like bring something that people can enjoy, and then you can also eat it. If there's nothing else there for you to eat, like let's say you're vegetarian, or let's say you're on a sugar-free, you know, lifestyle, um, then you can bring something that you will eat, but that will also be a nice addition to whatever feast there is. Yeah, that's a clever way to not impose your dietary restrictions on yeah. everyone else but still be able to eat some of the stuff you like to eat. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah. So however you celebrate it, or if you are thinking about celebrating it, why not just get a bunch of people together? You don't even have to be, you know, I feel like with Thanksgiving, you don't even have to really try that hard to get people together because it's like good food, good company. Just, you don't even have to do the traditional Thanksgiving fair, right? Just, Get some people together, go around the table saying what you're grateful for, if that's your yeah. jam. And yeah. it's just like a fun time to connect with people and have some good food. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So if you get the chance uh, and the inclination, we strongly encourage you to have your own Thanksgiving wherever you are. Okay. Um, and I think no one would regret it. 100% with you there. All right. So hopefully you enjoyed this real English conversation, advanced English learners. Let us know, was there anything that was a little bit confusing? What was something that surprised you about the way we spoke? Again, nothing of this was planned or rehearsed. We just decided right now that we want to talk about Thanksgiving, given that it's happening in a few days. So that's why we chose this topic. And thank you so much again for being here, for being a loyal subscriber, for listening to our podcast. 
If you would like to help our channel continue to grow, feel free to subscribe, share with the other people in your life that want to improve their English communication skills. And also, if you are listening to the podcast and you really like the podcast, then feel free to leave a nice review because that also really helps the channel out. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you in the next Advanced English. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.